What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. We've got a slightly different episode for you on the channel today and it's something that I've wanted to do for a little while now. I've been getting loads of messages and comments asking for advice on how to become a shark scientist. So I thought I'd do kind of like a little mini series on it. So today I'm gonna to tell you three things I wish that I knew before becoming a shark scientist. Now I should say that shark science is a massively broad field that encompasses so many different jobs. There's researchers, communicators, scientific coordinators, charity workers, educators, you name it, there's a job for it. However. I think I have to stress that my path is entirely specific to me, along with my experiences of the industry. I'm sure there are loads of other shark scientists out there that took a completely different path to the one that I did and still ended up working with sharks, along with having other experiences in the industry that were different to mine. My point is that not everyone's journey is the same, so don't take my word as gospel and think this is what I have to do, and if I don't do it, I won't become a shark scientist, because... That's just not the case. Anyway, back onto today's video. Up first, we've got competition and job security. I will tell you straight up, shark science is a hugely competitive field, and this is pretty much common knowledge. You have literally hundreds, if not thousands of people who want to do exactly the same thing that you want to do. This means that if you're not in education or working for an organization, it can be pretty difficult to find a full-time job in the industry, let alone one that pays well. For example, at the moment, I don't even have a full-time job in this field. <laughs> I literally got turned down for a science communicator job at a UK shark charity a few weeks ago. I didn't even make it to the interview stage. I do, however, do bits and bobs for various different organizations and almost get paid like a contractor for my work. Essentially, this means that if you need that regular money coming in, being a shark scientist, especially an early career one, is probably not gonna pay the bills every month. Many shark scientists, however, are in some form of education. For example, they might be doing a funded PhD or a postdoc. These people are essentially earning a salary from the funding that they receive for that PhD or postdoc, and this can help them pay for basic things like housing or living costs. For me right now, I'm not in education, but I am still researching sharks. Admittedly, at the moment, it's from my desk because travel at the moment is just not feasible considering all of the COVID restrictions. So please keep in mind that this field is generally not gonna pay that much, especially if you're an early career shark scientist. Job security is scarce and competition is really high. Next up, scientific writing. Okay, so this one is a little bit of a lie because I definitely knew going into shark science that it was going to involve an element of scientific writing. But there are parts of it that are very intense, particularly statistics. In the work that I do as a shark scientist, writing and publishing our work is super important. We have to publish to ensure that we're expanding our knowledge in the field of shark science and continually pushing the boundaries of what we know about sharks. The writing side of things, luckily, I've never really struggled with. I've always loved writing, but it's important to remember that scientific writing is a huge part of being a researcher. However, within that writing and the publishing of our research, there's a big element of statistical analysis. This is basically where we analyze our data and try to see if it's reliable and whether the conclusions that we come to can be backed up with statistics. Now, for me, I've always struggled with stats. I've never been good at maths ever since a young age. And this is something that I still struggle with to this day. There are days where I literally will want to pull my hair out because I can't figure out how to do a certain statistical analysis on a piece of software we use called R. It's an actual nightmare for me, and it's something that I have to continually try and work through and work around. There are obviously loads of classes that you can take on statistics, and they would be a key part of any university or college course that you might enroll in. Although that doesn't make it any easier for those of us who are utterly mathematically inept. It's something that you should definitely keep in mind though, because it's a big, big part of scientific writing, and that in itself is a big part of being a researching shark scientist. And then finally, the third thing that I wish I knew was that shark science is not what it looks like on TV. I get loads of people asking me if Shark Week is accurate and is that what it's really like being a shark scientist? Well, the truthful answer is not really. Yes, there are occasions where we get to go out and collect data on sharks in the field and that is something that we as shark scientists absolutely cherish because actually they don't really come around that often. I'd say that about 10% of your time as a researching shark scientist is spent out in the field. And unfortunately, I'm here to tell you that shark science is definitely not as glamorous as it is made out to be on the television. There is so much other gritty stuff that goes on behind the scenes that you would just never see. So before you even head out to do field stuff, there's planning, equipment sorting and testing, ethics, health and safety. I could literally go on and on. And then after your field excursion, there's hours and hours in the lab, 
hours and hours sat behind a desk doing statistical analysis, analyzing data and writing research papers. I can't tell you how many hours I spent in the lab when I was writing one of my sharks and microplastic papers. It was literally endless. And it wasn't nice lab stuff either. I pretty much had my hands in dead shark guts 24 seven. And then I was heating those guts up in ovens. The smell was awful. I used to go to work at my part-time job at a pub here where I live. And I was convinced that I still smelt like rotting dead fish. It was so gross. And then after that lab stuff, there was hours and hours of writing and drafting and rewriting and redrafting and statistical analysis. And at times I felt really, really low and was struggling with motivation. I did suffer with serious mental burnout at at least two points during my research. And that just wasn't a nice experience to go through. That kind of stuff takes its toll on those closest to you. And I'm pretty sure that I lost or damaged relationships with people because of it. So while shark science might look like a really cool and exciting field to be a part of, it's not all swimming with sharks and days out on the ocean. There's so much more hard graft and gritted determination that's required behind the scenes. Wow, I feel like I've really slagged off this field. <laughs> I think importantly, I don't want you to come away from this video feeling like I've put you off doing shark science because there are so many amazing and rewarding things that I get from doing what I do. Basically, what I'm hoping that you'll understand is this career choice is not easy and it's full of ups and downs. I'm also pretty sure there are probably other shark scientists that have had a way harder time of it than I've had. Now, I know I've slagged it off massively, but one of the next videos in this mini series is gonna be some of the benefits and things that I love about being a shark scientist. So make sure you keep an eye out for that one. I'm always happy to answer questions on this. And if there are lots of questions, I'll hopefully do a little Q and A for you and get them answered in a separate video. If that's something you'd like to see, then make sure to let me know in the comments and ask away any questions that you have. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the Shark Bite channel below where you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Until then, see you next time.